Hello, hello. Welcome. Yeah, it's nice to see so many of you, a few faces we haven't seen in a while. So welcome and good to have you here with us. Yeah, welcome back. And some of us, maybe almost everyone has heard about Francis. Francis laying inside her body. She has deeply touched so many people, <laughs> including me. She was so precious, really. It feels good to spend a moment just to honor Francis. I have this feeling that, that everyone, everyone loves her. She's, she's so lovable and she extends so much love. I just shared with Barrett how, how she seemed to have a, a gift in if, if someone was in a conflict with another person, Somehow she made both feel equally loved, like like both felt seen and heard, and somehow forgiveness flowed so easily then, like if there were two people in conflict. And, and it's beautiful, beautiful gift. And so many gifts Francis had and has. I can I can feel her, and she probably extends her gifts even more right now. The death of the body can actually almost be like a celebration when, when we realize that the mind is used for healing. We don't have to be afraid of it. Um, what do we have for today? Well, it fits perfectly with our, our workbook lesson today. Lesson 292, a happy outcome to all things is sure. A happy outcome to all things is sure. God's promises make no exceptions, and he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. Yet it is up to us when this is reached, how long we let an alien will appear to be opposing his. And while we think this will is real, we will not find the end he has appointed as the outcome of all problems we perceive, all trials we see, and every situation that we meet. Yet is the ending certain, for God's will is done in earth and heaven. We will seek and we will find according to his will, which guarantees that our will is done. We thank you, Father, for your guarantee of only happy outcomes in the end. Help us not interfere and so delay the happy endings you have promised us for every problem that we can perceive, for every trial we think we still must meet. An interesting ending there in this prayer. Every trial we think we still must meet. I think this implies that we don't have to go through trials. We don't want to delay the happy ending. 
to every problem. I just keep thinking so much about Frances. Actually, she she passed away maybe, I don't know, two, two three weeks ago. About two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. But I learned a bit this morning. It was sort of news, but I have had some intuitions come to me the last while. I had not talked to her for a long time, but but I felt her. And yeah, we we did a lot of fun things together, her and I. <laughs> but I shared with the others how, how it was when I first met her um, 14 years ago, I think, in Australia. If it had brought me along on this big tour and, and we had this big retreat on a big farm. <laughs> <laughs> and there was Frances. She came to her first retreat and she was so pure and so innocent and, and she had this love starting to come through her for David, this pull to David. This She just she just loved him it was the spirit calling her you know she 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 had said yes to healing her mind and she just she she told me she said i remember still we were sitting on this cute porch in one of the cottages it was in this hanging swing and she said jenny i have all this love for david what shall i do <laughs> she said I said, tell him, you must tell him. <laughs> and she did. And it was not long after that she came, she came along on this journey. And she had some seeming obstacles to go through around her mom. Her mom did not want her to leave. And many of us and many of you are going through this, you know, releasing of special relationships. And she certainly did that. And then we, we spent a lot of time um, together and here in Europe, we held some retreats, but then we spent some time, just her and I, and we were guided to be in a house sitting situation. And it was funny because I had runs and she was constipated. We had these two things going on. <laughs> it, was, it was reflecting our minds. I was a little too loose in my in my way, and, and she was a little held back. So we kind of we healed it actually. We both felt better after a few days, but <laughs> but it was this, you know, yeah, out of balance. <laughs> and so it was, yeah, it was very very meaningful for us to, <laughs> to be together. Yeah. And we just talked, we just enjoyed talking about all this deep stuff in the mind. And then we drove, we, we went on road trips too. We drove down here to Spain and started this house we had outside Barcelona in La Yacuna. We had this community house and her and I were the first to arrive there and set things up. And, uh, lots of adventures. Oh yeah, I just, I just feel her, I feel Feel her presence. Very sweet. Yeah. 
He was always so swift, like with making decisions. I am sometimes a bit slow and <laughs> I want to choose between all the options, but she was like, Ch -ch -ch, we do this and this <laughs> very swift. And if we made a decision, we we were stuck to it. She was very, yeah, very determined in that way. I don't know, I don't have much more to talk about. <laughs> I just have been in this today. Yeah, we can I can read something that I read. Saren put together this beautiful little booklet about Francis. And there was a like a poem in there that I believe she wrote. I failed to read it here. Cold night, dark dawn. I ran into the ocean. The ocean, aloof and mighty, asked, Where are you from? I answered, I am from the eyes that see sickness and death. I am from the heart that bears loss and hurt. The ocean asked again, what are you? I am a drop of tear. How old are you? As old as time. What happened to the eyes and the heart? They turn into desert. Why are you here? I came back to be where I belong. Though we may find our likings here, this is not our home. We are from before time began and from behind the eyes and the heart. You turn into tears while withholding your true expression. Go back to where you came from, though barren as the desert. Let mountains not stop you, they are but obstacles set by time. Let your expressions flow like a river until it becomes the eternal truth. Then all the tears shall return to light and we go back to where we belong together. Mm. Though we may find our likings here, this is not our home. We are from before time began and from behind the eyes and the heart. Yeah, like this just says it so deeply. Well, it's really kind of a sad thing to believe we are here in the world and bodies. This realization it's not who we are. This is yeah, and this is beautiful, this poem. by Francis.
Uh, maybe some of you would like to express, we can we'll open up for sharing here early on. Diana. First of all, I want to mention that I've seen this bright star in the sky the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. I was pointed to it because I usually go out in the evening. And when the news came about Francis this morning, I just yeah, just felt that okay, that was that was that yeah. was her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have had a lot of emotions about this coming surgery. A lot of fear and anger actually about how it's been with the surgery so far. Yeah, so I asked I asked them to put in a, a fixed uh, port. Mm -hmm. So they called me the day before yesterday and said they're not going to give me that. It's a, too big of a project, except from that they said that they're gonna use uh, ultrasound to find my beans so they can put a needle. Well, my feelings, I hate hospitals. I don't want, I really don't want to do this. And I'm ashamed of all these feelings really because they're all body thoughts, but they are there. Yeah. They are there for forgiveness. allow them to move through. Yeah, I've been crying for two days. I don't know what, what to make of this. What more can I do than to show up and hand everything over to spirit and it's no fun to go through these experiences. I can't bear it, you know, just going through all this again. And then the outcome is just, yeah, there's no out, real outcome here. Uh, what if love, uh, the outcome is love? The outcome is for you to forgive these fears, you know, even the fears of how it went in the past. And this conclusion that it was failure or something went wrong in the past, you know. Yeah, so I went back to my sister to finish the grooming of the dog. And I got triggered. And there was something that, yeah, I wanted to show her, you know how to do it and and she said you are bully you are bullying me and then she brought up past events you know and yeah I noticed I defended myself and so you forgot to hand her over you had the outcome of a clean cut dog more as an outcome. Yeah. So I felt to leave. I just said, look, I, I need to leave. Mm. And then she sent me messages, you know, I don't want to have anything more to do with you. Whatever, all these things. And I just looked at my mind and yeah, I said I need to be able to humble myself. So I wrote her a message that I, I was wrong. And you were right. And I apologized. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember today's lesson. A happy outcome to all things is sure, you know. I don't know what that means. 
Well, it's like an affirmation of truth that Jesus gives us, you know. God's promises make no exceptions. And he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found in everything. And if it's not joy, there is a misunderstanding, a misinterpretation of, of something. Because when we, even when we answer a call for love, with love, we will be given the love ourselves. But when we answer a call for love with something other than love, you know, that's what we get for ourselves too. So I think that's why you didn't feel so good because you had you had a bit of an outcome there. So I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't complete the grooming or not if you didn't do it to extend love and to forgive your own feelings, you know. If you had any other outcome, yeah, it, it's, it's better to wait until you feel the intention clear. I want to do this to forgive. I want to do this to extend love, answer the call for love, or even to do it to heal your own mind, to see what's, what's coming up for you, but not to correct her. Because that won't, well, you know, I don't think she asked for that. So it's more for you to release your perception, to hand her over. Thank you. Yeah. Just pray with you to allow your fears to fall to the side. Because you do get a lot of sweet opportunities to trust. That's all it is. It's just opportunities to trust. And when you start to trust spirit more and more, you, you do feel, you know, this even trust in the world, even trust what is happening, you know, because you know then the world is not governed by the laws the world made up, but by spirit behind, you know. The truth behind, beyond the form. I think it's an invitation to be gentle, because there is a lot of fear. Yeah, to see it as an opportunity for healing and for trust. Every situation you find yourself in. Yeah. Love and gentleness be with you. Christian. Hello. Hi. Hello. I just have a question. I heard um, also today uh, that, that Francis has passed on and uh, I read some of the, on this side where there was a booklet and, and and I read it and, and I only saw 
uh, once in in Schall in in as we were in in the Netherlands. It, it touched me very much. And in this booklet, there was a passage where she spoke about a dream she had. She, yeah. she there was a scene she described where I was said through the dream figures that she has one more year to live. And that is, that's for sure, so to say. There's nothing to change in this. And I asked myself, <laughs> I know that's a usual question, but there's a, the line in the course where it says uh, the script is written. Is it that way with everybody, with everybody? Is the script written? Is it already done? Well, this is like a trick question because it comes from a mind that is, it comes from the ego. Basically. Yes. The question yes. doesn't come from the enlightened mind because the enlightened mind doesn't have any questions. So that's the first thing to know about this, you know. And 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 this mind doesn't fully grasp what the script is written means. Because you can't think of it without thinking of timeline. No. You know, you think it is about coming events and past events. Mm -hmm. And okay, are they predetermined? Mm. Yeah, that's the question here. Yes, that's the question. Yeah, um, which isn't even a helpful perspective, you know, that, uh, because we are here to forgive our illusions. That's our job. And when we do that, we save time. We can save hundreds of years. We can save thousands of years by forgiving our illusions. Why would Jesus say that if it was all predestined on the timeline? He couldn't say that and you can save time, you know? No, yeah. So, so the script is written simply means perspective of enlightened mind that sees all events and sees the whole world as already over, already done, finished. The timeline over, events are over, and there is only joy and love and peace. That's what the script is written means. It's done. And Thank it's you. not helpful. Yeah, it's not yeah. helpful to feel it out in any other way. Yeah. yeah. You can save time, and you're actually here to save time. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it came from this point uh, because you know this this dream she talked about triggered this notion to think about this way. The, I'm in this body for a time, and then the body is laid aside. What what never started. I, 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 <laughs> that I was not born and will not die. What, what I really am is was not born and will not die. But in this body, this body has a time. It is time, huh? Yeah, this, it's a matter of time. The body is made of time. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's path is different. And somehow, you know, I also saw, I also happened to see this uh, sharing about her dream that she had maybe early this year or sometime last year. She had this dream where, where she was told that she was going to die within yeah. a year. Yeah. And some fear was brought up. So she got a chance to look at fear of that. And so... It, what, what whatever lessons the mind has, it's individualized and it is for the, for whatever whatever is most helpful, basically. So 
So yeah, she had that come to her. Yes, I understand my question comes out uh, of, of my personal fear from my identification with the body and and <laughs> then comes the thinking uh, I, whatever I do it's it's already made up and you know, I, I heard uh, from from a teacher years ago he said um, we are like this uh, like these cars on a Disneyland or something you know you you drive in a car and the car is on a on a rail on a rail and and it makes and, and the children sit there and they they are on the wheel but and they think if they go this way with the wheel they go this way but there's a rail underneath it's already done yeah that, I, sorry for my bad English. The word don't yeah. come to my mind, but I hope you understand what it what he wants to say. Is, um, yeah, no, but but the human mind may not be helped by that because um, I've heard people say, "Well, it's all decided, so it, it doesn't matter what I do. So I'm just gonna not do anything because you know." But it's, I don't think it's a very helpful um, no. yeah. direction of the thinking because we are here to forgive. Yeah. You know, and, and we always have an opportunity to forgive. Forgive everything. Forgive what what is perceived. Forgive what is in front of us. Yeah. Yes, thank you. But yeah, it's you know that the body is not going to stay we know that yes mm -hmm. such moments uh when when something happens like someone passes away and you think she's very young why so but it, it's felt really felt also if we sit together it's this power which is in, in that there's really power in that really strong power brings us to the point really yeah yeah it's also in that yeah yeah and whatever it brings up it's helpful it's helpful, a very helpful opportunity to look at what it brings up. Yeah. You brought up some stuff for me. I, I was curious to talk to Frances after her trip to uh, Japan, Australia. And I prayed about it when she came back home at the end of June. Um, and I thought, yeah, I'm open to, to doing that. But the guidance never came in to give her a call. You know, I, it didn't come in. But... I know for sure that I checked in, I asked, you know, and I felt very joined with her in mind. And I have, I have felt that way with her. I don't know when I spoke to her last, it might have been early this year or sometime last year, maybe, but it has been very, you know, very, very rare occasions. And yeah, it was recently I just spoke to Barrett about her and I, I just said to him, I feel there's something going on with, with Francis' physical, um, with her body, with her physically. And, but yeah, that, that was, that was it. I didn't, didn't know she had cancer, quite severe cancer. She had, yeah. Uh, but one thing I, I felt also, it's that not only with this, but as you said before, you can feel her, you know, he, she's still there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and she wants that. She wants 
us to to feel the joy. Yeah. And if it's helpful. If it's helpful to think of it as her, or you know, we can. But I always see everything that is joyful is spirit, you know, and she's in spirit. Yeah. We don't get lost. No. <laughs> no, it's only belief. It's only this belief to face. Yeah. This nightmare that we're facing, you know, this. I think for her it was maybe like a nightmare when she had a dream about death, you know, but but then she processed that. Mm. Yeah, I had a little snippet from the course that came to me. Um Learn that even the darkest nightmare that disturbs the mind of God's sleeping son holds no power over him. Even the darkest nightmare that disturbs the mind of God's sleeping son has no power over him. God watches over him and light surrounds him. But these are just words when we when we are in the nightmare when we think of something scary you know, like Lena's experiences and, and I've heard higher beings have been teaching that yeah life in the body is a very very helpful it's a helpful place to face fear life in the body seeming life in the body, <laughs> life in this world. Mm -hmm. It's a, you can face a lot of fear in, and it's, it heals the mind. Um, yes, I, I, I know what you're speaking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's terrible construct it's it's always hmm. it's, it's just the other way to, the life is expanding it is wide it's open and this fear thing is uh, it's constricted it's it's closed it's hmm. like you like in the course we say with love you can extend love and that's the motion wide. So, so do you know what you want, Christian? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That feels right. Yeah. Yeah. You keep praying for your next step. Nice if there are obstacles, you can explore them and, you know, come back to following. Yes, I'm, I'm intense in that the last weeks and months. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of work here, of course. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> as we keep talking about Francis and her transition uh, this candle sitting on our table in front of us is like a big pillar candle but it's 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 kind of getting near the end <laughs> and and all of the wax is just sort of spreading out and the and the light in the candle is brighter and bigger, I think, than ever before. <laughs> it's like the candle is almost like melting out of its form, mm. and the light is just shining more and more. It's, it's 
beautiful symbol. <laughs> Yeah, I was glad that I woke up early this morning and, and I saw I saw the, the news about Francis and because David was still awake, so I called him. So I had this sweet call with him and I got to cry and share my thoughts and feelings. It was just very helpful. And then Kirsten was even an hour later in her time zone, so she was also awake. So I had another call with her too. So I was really grateful to be filled in with you know, the last part of Francis' journey here. Okay, and. Oof, I can speak through a lot of emotion and I think the question that you asked Christian was, and what is it you want? And it just sparked something in me and yeah, just this sense of stepping out of that comfort zone is very much around you know, going back to what seemed familiar, what fe felt safe. And yet when you follow that safety through, it's like, well, where is the safety there? There isn't any, but at least it's familiar. It's, it's that sort of sense, you know, but yeah, there's still like a push pull, you know, like where I get caught up, you know, what, what, what am I to do? Or, you know, it, it's like trying to make a plan or something. And I just don't know. So that's scary too. But only only to one part of the mind. And it's, it's what do I want? Which is a beautiful question. It's like, what do I want? Well, I don't want to feel stuck or I don't want to feel caught up. But I don't want to try and bypass those emotions either. Um, yeah. and, and the Holy Spirit is the answer to that. If you pass by through what is guided, what is the next inspiration, you know, so when you feel stuck, yeah, there is no purpose in staying stuck, but to ask for the next inspired step. Yeah. Because you have it, you have the inspiration. You just sometimes you just need to find it again, you know. Yeah. Just felt like a sort of a rocking of the boat, but the there's enough gentleness and there's just enough kindness, you know, to to move through whatever's going on at the moment and so yeah that's yeah I think that the purpose of speaking is just to to really feel into being aligned with with Holy Spirit and yeah and not to be too concerned about which direction it, it'll it will appear thank you yeah yeah I agree with that I keep getting this image of of uh of actually taking a, a man's hand and letting yourself be spun on the dance floor hmm. this beautiful quote came to my mind by um Anais Nim she said, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. No. Yeah. Then that just reminds me of the picture of, of you know, like where they scattered Francis's ashes. 
and yeah the bud just opened yeah because remaining tight in the bud that is more painful you think that's familiar and nice but even the familiar will not feel good once you once you're ready to blossom you know no but then you know like the old fears like drop in you know like oh financial insecurity is the strong one so just yeah forgive any ideas around money until i can let that go and yeah mm. yeah just facing all the fears yeah yeah and that's what seems to be happening it's like instead of in my mind, when I see something coming up, I see like a tendency to want to move away from it. And it's like, oh, just go back there and just allow it. So it's like, yeah, just let him more and more up. I still, I still do a bit of avoidance. I'm, I'm aware, of, but I know the direction and that's, that's the most precious thing it feels, you know, like uh, there's no other route, there's no other way than and to face whatever needs facing. Yeah, follow the next inspired step. Yeah. Oh. That's it. Maybe this to date as many inspired men as you can while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that's supposed to happen yet, Jenny. It's like, yeah, I, I get, I get the idea and and I'm open to it it's like do I join a dating agency do I you know just allow yeah we did some course groups there locally or other groups and put out that you're you know interested in meeting nice new male friends on some groups you know you can just have fun with it take it lightly like we talked about, the body is just a temporary vehicle, you know. Now you can support yourself to speed it up. Yeah, there's such a resistance. It's like, it's not my next inspired step. Yeah. No, it's just friends, playmates. Finding new friends, you know, to join you. <sighs> <laughs> yeah and I think you can just feel a sense of innocence in it you know just maybe like a little three-year-old going up to another little three-year-old and saying do you want to play with me you know that sense of just sweetness and pureness mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful to uh, to be here this morning. Very, very grateful for having you. In my life and this moment, I can share and hear about Francis. For some reason, it, it, it's hard to, to know that she passed two weeks ago and we only knew yesterday for me, yesterday. And it, it's like, as if I missed something, I... <laughs> Mm 
sometimes when someone passes that I love very much, for some reason, the elements or the the weather or the the things are around me are telling me things, and it is very very healing. And to go through it with the people when it's happening. So yesterday I felt alone. Um, yeah. Uh, jumping um like it's, it's 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 kind of okay we are not a body we are free and but <laughs> i cannot jump like that and it's and i feel it it's like a wave that comes and goes and it shows me like the light and the but some emotions are there. And just, I feel uh, a bit ashamed of having sadness, like I it should be dancing in joy or something. No. So, um, yeah, it's all of it. Uh, I've had waves of sadness today myself. I've had tears, including when I first realized what had happened. There's no should, you know, you should be different than you feel. This is. It's good that you're feeling and that you're allowing. I cried first thing when I realized that she passed. I just cried on the toilet when I was waking up. And then I cried when I spoke to David and spoke to Kirsten and then throughout the day too a few times. Oh, it's okay. It's okay if you feel a bit confused or shocked or yeah. 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 And both Kirsten and David shared many sweet things about Francis last time. Yeah, her last time here, here in this world. Because she she knew she had this cancer for three months and it um, was diagnosed on on Independence Day on the 4th of July. So there was, you know, I felt immediately, oh, the independence of the body. You know, she wanted to realize the independence of the body as herself. And then it went three months and then on the 4th of October, she passed, and that was St. Francis Day. And we had already named our dog here, St. Francis. Came to both me and Matthew so clearly. We shared about that. You know, it's one mind. You know, there is so much, yeah, uh, much joining. Trying to think, yeah, some things they shared, you know, they had, they felt to go to some different doctors, you know, to, yeah, mainly for the holy encounters, it seemed. So they, and, and the, the status of her, her body and her cancer was quite um, far, far gone. Um, but she walked. She was happy. She walked into the doctor's 
offices and the, while the doctors were expecting someone coming in in a wheelchair, you know, almost dying already. But she were, they were shocked. They were like, is this you? You know, because they had seen the scans. They had been sent the, all the scans beforehand. So they saw how, how much this cancer had spread from her brain throughout her body. And, um, but she was, she walked and she was happy. And they would share how she'd been, they'd been sit, sitting many times um, in his room, you know, and had deep talks throughout this time. So very peaceful, everything was. And she also didn't want to hear any logistical, she didn't want to have logistical meetings about the ministry. It was, if anyone came into her room, talking logistics and talking about the ministry, she told them to go out. She <laughs> thought they should be on it. Yesterday I, I I had things to do in the in Peachland in the house and I could not. I said to um, to Anna because at some point I thought what's what's going on like I'm starting something and it doesn't feel right so I I go elsewhere no no and then something came through it's oh there's a, a superpower here in this house is joining oh I can ask for joining joining for what I don't know but okay let's try that and we and I and I just sat and just I just said that like I don't know why but <laughs> it was guiding me to join and so we have a sweet moment I think that's when the news arrived after that yeah maybe you felt it coming you were so sensitive yeah I guess it it was kind of a I felt disoriented but the thought that came in was it's like there's Francis and there's the two weeks <laughs> that I could not put together kind of. Yeah, I think it was just maybe her wish or the guidance, the feeling that to not put attention on the body. And I think they wanted to have time with this so that they could support everybody else too. Right. So. Yeah, because yeah. it's quite a big, loving family who have a lot of emotions now, I think. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they had a couple of big events. I think they wanted to right. have enough space to support the, the whole process, not just for the people there, but also for everyone. They wanted to have space to support that. Yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Thank you. You're always another way of seeing. <laughs> you look like sunshine today with your yellow. <laughs> 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 Sunsh sunshine twins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Muna. First time I met you, Moon, I was with Francis. I was standing on your porch uh, yeah. outside your house, knocking on your door, and then you opened. And yeah. the three of us joined. Yes. I was remembering that, actually, before I heard the news, I was remembering... I was remembering our whole encounter with you and uh, Francis in my house in Tunbridge Wells. And I was remembering Francis in particular. I always remember seeing you as an angel. 
but I was remembering Francis in particular just two or three days ago and how I always feel like I know her in my heart. And I also remember when I went to Mexico six, six years ago, I had frizzy hair and looked very different. She was like squinting, looking at me and I said, Muna? she was on the stage and I was, you know, <laughs> with the people on the grounds. I thought, wow, what a connection we have. And so it was very precious to remember that I had all these thoughts, like you say, intuition about Francis before I heard the news. And I won't deny the news shocked me to my roots. And I recognize it's, it's the death wish that is not yet healed so completely. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for, for that seeing because I got caught in it like many people in the sadness and the shock. It was a huge shock. Um, and yeah, I got in touch with, I still have a death wish down deep in me, like life is not worth living. It gets harder and harder. But then as spirit guided me to connect with you, I was also remembering the gifts of walking the walk of trust and that all the fear and all the sadness and all the tears is just letting go of deepen it's, it's let deepening the walk of trust that's all it is because I was also like Julie shocked that you know she passed away when we were with David and Kirsten in the retreat and there was just no no inkling no sign that something has changed because they were pouring out the love to us and and the healing was so massive to every every single person there so that is like a tremendous gift to see to learn that yes you can overcome your body identification they were such amazing symbols reflections of that both of them just keep her keep pouring out the love and you oh you constantly you're instantly saved and that was that was what I learned from that and the last thing that came to me is when they share she had cancer diagnosis and she chose not to do chemo you guys instantly came to my mind because spirit has been directing me to rejoin and I felt the resistance I don't know why it comes but yeah, that was the choice um, for me last year. Do I go into chemotherapy or do I go for healing? And Spirit said, of course, the gentle, lovely approach is always better than chemo and just getting into the intensity of body identification. So I just wanted to share that because as soon as I came, there was massive healing and you were witnesses to it. And the ego wants to put that aside, you know, when the resistance comes, it's like, forget all that healing, forget all that love, forget all that joining and just stay in the resistance. And I mean, his, the ego is ingenious, we know that. But yeah, I just wanted to share that and say how beautiful it is to reconnect with you and yeah, open up the joining and maybe come in to see you guys at some point. That fills my heart with joy right now. <laughs> Thank you. It feels really good, Muna. <laughs> we welcome you with open hearts, open arms. Yeah. Thank you. And I just want to say that the ego may be ingenious, but the Holy Spirit has the upper hand. Absolutely. <laughs> because only love is actually true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very present to that. I'm very grateful that... I am deepening the trust and and I started by really not knowing what to say. I thought I'm going to say something specific, but I learned to just come from nothing and say Holy Spirit speak through me. And that's happening more and more. And what keeps coming is the deeper emotions that my mind wants to gloss over maybe with a story or good mm -hmm. sharing or whatever. So 
really grateful. Thank yeah. you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your courage and your willingness and just yeah following. And yeah, the ego may be ingenious, but spirit is ingenuous. That's a word that is very rare, but that means like innocent. Ingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> I know it because I had an email address in the past, Jen Ingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That's> great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we Peter and Solai's hand again and Patricia also. Yeah. Did you have more Peter and Solai? Or did Peter has something? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks for sharing about you and Francis at the beginning. I really appreciate that. It's good when the teacher is open. I I just love that. I just like um it so speaks to me and gives me permission. The most impactful moment I had with her when she was leading a group and she was the only one there and she didn't speak for many minutes and there'd been a lot of speaking. Normally there's a lot of speaking and she didn't speak. It was one of the most powerful moments I've ever had in my life. And it wasn't tense or anything. It was already beautiful um, joining. And I, I wrote about some of the other things, but I, the thing that I still has had the most impact was what I read about her process of dying, if you like, and her faith, but seemingly I don't know if it was total, but it became that way that she was able to embrace fully that she was loved and that this was not her home and that it wasn't a failure or it wasn't wrong to have a so-called illness or it was just time time to go home and it doesn't matter what age somebody is or but I mean some these are some of the things that came up for me but and still a lot of things being thrown up and I, I feel just <laughs> I mean that is the sign of a good teacher that even in the seems to me even in the passing in their death they're still teaching and um you know that's just remarkable um inspiring that they they walk the talk you know to the end yeah. and you know really tapped my cynicism of like you know all my unworthiness i can't do that or whatever it is but but it's yeah it's very very real very inspiring yeah yeah david shared because she did not want attention you know she didn't want attention attention to her body attention to her person and even when people came in and gave her you know verbal um, appreciation you know and or yeah, if they came in to talk, she she kept saying, it is not about me. It is not about me. <laughs> you know. Mm. So she really didn't want that, you know, the attention on her person. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's stunning, really. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now they cross again. I think we forgot. <laughs> okay. So I think we will move on now to yeah. uh, Thank you, Peter. Okay. And reflections. Okay, Patricia, we can go to your next. I just don't want to start to cry again. So that's why I put my hand down. Don't hold back your tears. It's, you know, it's, it's just beautiful that they want to come. Just allow all the crying. Just, yeah, just... but it's, sometimes it has to stop. I cannot breathe, you know? <laughs> I think the breathing will take care of itself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. Oh, I don't need to manage this one. The control is freaking me. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, love you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Just one little thing, huh? oh, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nudged to uh, maybe uh, I, um, the first time I met Francis was uh, in Mexico. And uh, at the end of a long retreat, we I shared a, a song and and she she, uh, she she was crying with the song. So maybe I can sing a little song if you want the song, that song. Sure, we can finish with that. And uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not a singer, but so um, it's a friend of mine who wrote that song a uh, long, long time ago. Right? <sighs> time will pass me by, my years will run dry, seasons are born to die right before my eyes in the cycle of changes there's no beginning or end it's older than any planet newer than snowflakes fallen it's a wonder that all us humans can grab a hold so tightly to such a fleeting reality as our individuality, like atoms in the ocean, speck of dust in the universe, like a heartbeat in a lifetime. Everything comes and goes in the flow of light and shadows. But there comes a time when a soul is tired of reaching out and stay empty-handed. There comes a time when a touch of grace inverses the compass. Listen to the words of the sages. Go beyond the norm. Somewhere deep inside, there's a light that always shines. It was there, there while in the womb, and through all the stages of my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Deep sense of serenity, peaceful and quiet observer. An underlying order. It's a wonder that all us humans share the same reality, like atoms in the ocean, speck of light in the universe. We always shine so brightly 
We have no beginning or end. Thank you, Francis. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful ending to our time tonight. Hmm. very much i i really feel that theme and the beginning of this session too i felt this is the message you know and the poem i read from francis too was just we need to go beyond we are going beyond this is not our home these bodies this world so the song was perfect mm. yeah beautiful and right as you said, beyond these bodies, beyond this world, there's a flash of lightning. And Lights so... up the room. <laughs> yeah, this is rare. Thunder, yeah. We don't have too many thunderstorms here in Spain. It's beautiful. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.